Thank you for joining me today. Um, my name is Dr. Tom LeHue, and we're going to be talking about type nines. Uh, we are um, looking at a book by Beatrice Chestnut and uh, Uranio Paez called The Enneagram Guide to Waking Up. And in this book, she, she mentions um, some key patterns of each of the types. And so we want to take a minute and talk about some of those related to type nine. Just want to remind you that on my website, TomLahue.com, um, you can book coaching appointments for yourself um, or relationship coaching. There's also information about the certificate classes I offer if you're interested in the Enneagram, want to know more about it, and also an events page where you can invite me out to uh, speak to your team uh, for staff trainings or whatever I can do to help you guys. Okay, so let's, let's jump into um, type nine. And let's see what she says about you guys. And then I'll try to filter it through um, my own kind of framework. And I've read a lot of books about Enneagram. I'm not an expert, uh, but i um, always a student. And I've had a lot of coaching conversations with type 9s. Uh, a lot of 9s feeling stuck and not knowing like what the next step is, how to motivate themselves. And so I want to uh, begin this series with uh, just using the term finding your motivation. And this is going to be a two-part series. I don't think I'm going to get through everything in in um, in one video. And you know, in her uh, way, she writes this. She titles this uh, "Neglecting What Is Important to You," and the second section as "Difficulty Mobilizing Your Energy on Your Own Behalf." And so I'm just going to combine these um, these two different thoughts in these two videos with this with this title, Finding Your your Motivation, Part 1 and 2. You know, and that can be really difficult sometimes for type 9s, finding your motivation. What is it that motivates you? You might look at other people and it looks like they're very motivated. They're, they're going after things. They're, uh, you know, chasing things in life and trying to persuade people to their way of thinking. And, and you might struggle with that, wondering like, well, I'm not sure what I want to do, or how do I know what I want to do is the right thing I should do? What am I good at? And um, it can be difficult sometimes for nines to to know um, what the next step is, or what the next thing they should do, or you know what job they should take, or whether they should get married, or uh, what part of the world to live in. It can maybe feel a little overwhelming sometimes knowing your own motivation or hearing your own voice or hearing your own motivation. And I just want to interact with what she says here. She says, you need to, uh, so you, you tend to support others and pay attention to all sort of external demands, uh, but neglecting sometimes your own internal preferences. Now just stop right there for a second and think about that. What is, what is she saying? She's saying that the external world sometimes can feel a little bit more important or a little more obvious of, of what the demands are that you need to act on. In other words, sometimes it can be easier for you or more natural for you to have other people's expectations become the priority for you. And in this way, you might not even realize that you've been engulfed or enmeshed in other people's agendas or other people's personalities or other people's dominant traits. And you sometimes have to withdraw and get away from other people to come back to yourself to realize, why am I doing this? Like, this isn't who I am. This isn't what I care about. Um, how, did I get, how did I get this far down this road? How did I get this far down this alley? This isn't where I want to be in life. And sometimes, you know, nines um, can wake up and be startled and realize like, you know, I, I'm not sure how I got here, but I've been following other people's priorities or other people's agendas. And you might struggle at this point knowing what your own priorities are or knowing what your own internal voice is telling you. Um, sometimes it can feel easier when the external requirements are placed on you. I don't have to think about it. And that's kind of that sloth is I don't have to think about it. I don't have to sort it out. I can just kind of do what's in front of me. I can just kind of do what I'm expected to do and complete these tasks. But Obviously, we want you to be able to hear your own voice. We want you to be able to stop and think for yourself and say, what do I want? 
And is what I want important enough to, to get to get motivated to go after it? And what would it take for me to get motivated to go after what I want? Um, and if you're you've experienced this, like, yeah, this really is difficult. Um, I want you to realize like you're not um, there's not something wrong with you. This is this is stuff that nines in general struggle with these types of issues. I mean, she's got a whole section on it in her book. And I I spent a lot of time in coaching calls talking to nines about these topics. So just notice if the external demands can feel more um, more obvious to you or more um, uh, compelling to you than internal uh, motivations. Now notice one thing she said was you spend a lot of time looking after other people or paying attention to other people. And that's why sometimes I think nines could be mistaken for twos because where twos, you know, go after people to help them and be assistance to them and find a certain sense of worth and value in that, nines could be right next to them providing value or right next to them serving and helping other people, but for a different motivation. I think sometimes with nines, not I'm not saying you don't want to be helpful. I'm just saying the motivation to help might be a little different. The motivation for a nine might be more like I don't I don't want to be somebody who's not being helpful. I don't want to be uh, I don't want to frustrate people or upset them because I'm not helping them. And other people are important, and their their agendas are important, and other people are valuable. And so I need to I need to show up to take care of other people, and maybe acquiesce some of my own um, agenda in order to help other people accomplish theirs. Their agenda seems really strong, and it seems really important to them. And I don't want to be somebody that's not helpful. I don't, and I I don't know what else to do. So I'm going to just show up and help these people. I'm not saying that's always the case, but just just take stock and evaluation of yourself. Has that been the case before? So I think nines could look a little bit twos, and they could look a little bit like five sometimes. Um, and I think, especially with guys, sometimes they can look like fives and think they're fives. But I think fives are afraid of other people engulfing them or invading their space or taking them over or pushing out their agenda. And I think this is one place where fives and nines really are different you kind of have to wake a nine up and say, hey, why are you doing this? Why is this your job? Why do you live here? Why are these people your friends? They're not friendly to you, so why do you keep going on with them? And sometimes you have to shake a nine, sort of wake them up, and they're startled to realize like, oh, crap, how did I get here? Like, I don't even know what my own agenda is. I don't know what my own personality is. I don't know what I want. I don't know what's next for me. And I think fives are afraid of that. They're afraid of being engulfed by other people. They're afraid of being intruded and invaded and having other people crowd out their voice and their agenda. Fives are going to push back on that. Fives, you know, have very strong boundaries. And that's one of the things that nines often struggle with, especially nine wing ones. I think nine wing eights can be a little bit more boundary oriented, but nine wing ones for sure often struggle with boundaries. In fact, that's one of the key patterns that she's going to talk about, and I'm going to make a video about it, about nines and boundaries. And you might, as a nine, hear that word and think, I don't even know what boundaries are. What are you talking about? Boundaries. Well, boundaries are w boundaries are property lines. It's, it's where you understand that, okay, my will ends here and someone else's will starts there. Or my yard ends here and somebody else's yard stop, starts there. And I need to be responsible for what's in my yard, but I don't need to be responsible what's in, for what's in somebody else's property. You know, I don't have to take care of people. I, I don't have to to um, uh, to be responsible for all the things that they're responsible for. I don't need to assume responsibility for them. They need to be responsible for themselves. They need to be self-disciplined. And I don't have to just come along and take care of these people because they won't take care of themselves. One of the best boundary words that we could ever use is the word no. And just think about that word. Some of you guys, that's really hard for you to say no to people. Um, you'll say it's fine, you'll say it's okay, and then you'll try to figure out a way to get out of it, and then maybe just blacklist people and withdraw from them because it's so hard to say no. And I just want to, we're not talking about boundaries yet, we'll get there, but just realize when you don't have good relational boundaries, you'll probably end up creating like geographical boundaries. You'll just go dark on people and disappear from them, and they won't know what happened, but you just had a hard time saying no. And so you put a wall up where just a fence would work. All right, so let's get back to today's about finding your motivation. Okay, so she says, um, it will be important for you to notice that if you prioritize other people's agendas ahead of your own. Yeah, so think about that. What's your agenda? What are you going after? What are you waking up that's burning in your heart that you, you're burdened by? You just got to go after it. Anything? 
Or is it somebody else's agenda, somebody else's plan for you? What's your plan for you? Have you thought about this? Do you struggle with this? Do you have do you have a calendar and you know goals and you're accomplishing what needs to be done? You're prioritizing your tasks and you're going after something and you're pursuing that. Is that normal for you, or do you really have to work at this, or do you just hit the sloth button and take somebody else's agenda on, merge with them, and then just become like that other person? In some ways, it's easier, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee you a full, rich life. In that way, you're not really present to life. You're not really showing up to life if you're living somebody else's agenda. You know, I always I, I think about this phrase I heard a long time ago about marriage. It said, if two people are exactly the same, then one of them is not necessary. Wow, just think about that. You know, if you merge so strongly with another person and their agenda, then are you really showing up? And you might kind of ask yourself, well... You know, uh, if they break up with me, uh, was it really me they were breaking up with? Because did I, did, I, did I check out of this relationship a long time ago? Did I check out of this work environment a long time ago? Am I fully checked in? Am I fully present to life? Am I giving it everything I can? Am I moving forward with, with a, a high degree of, of um, let's see, what motivation? Or am I just going through the motions, just repeating the routines, uh, just doing the minimum, just doing what I need to do to get by to not cause problems? You know, what's my what's my um, what's my goal here? What's my hope? What's my what am I trying to accomplish? I realize, you know, whether you think about it or not, or whether you're intentional or not, your life is building something. Think of it as like you got a box full of all these parts and you're putting them together. And do you know what you're building? And will you be satisfied with what the outcome is? Will you be satisfied with what is built when it's finished? Or, you know, are you just kind of like hoping to just string one day along to the next, get to the weekend and crash? Um, because there's got to be something more, right? There's got to be something better for you. And there is. And you don't have to have it all figured out. Um, just start somewhere, start somewhere in your life and start making progress, whether it be in your physical health or relationships or at work or in your community life or your spiritual life, just pick one of those areas and start making progress, start moving forward. A lot of times with nines, as they begin moving forward, you know, one victory often leads to another. So this leads me to something that kind of popped in my mind the other day when I was talking to, to talking to a nine. Sort of the metaphor came to my mind of like a locomotive or like a train. You know, when you think about a train, you know, you get millions of pounds, right? Tons. You're trying to move uh, this, this uh, locomotive with all of its freight from one side of the country to the other. It's an impossible task. Um, and, and so the only way that this train is going to be successful is it has to have good uh, iron tracks. It's got to have good tracks that lead from one destination to the other. And it seems like this with nines. Nines can be so, um, uh, so productive. They can be so, so much of like uh, people that just endure and persevere and they can carry such a heavy load and they can be reliable and they can, they can just accomplish so much. But it seems like nines are a little bit like trains in that they have to have clear tracks you know, that are set down in front of them that they can then just, they can just go all the way across one side of the country to the other. What happens if you take that train and it doesn't have good tracks? What if you don't, what if you have a train but no tracks? What's going to happen to that train? It's not going to have any direction. Uh, and it's going to, you know, it's gonna, you're going to lay it out there. You're going to set it out there in the middle of the desert somewhere in some, some warehouse or something, some train yard. And it's just going to rust. And I'm afraid that that could happen with nines, that they could just kind of sit there year after year, maybe decade after decade, and just kind of rust and sort of fall apart. And like, well, at least I, at least I, you know, I got my health, or at least I'm still mobile, or at least I, you know, got a job. And it's like, yeah, you know, do you know, do you need to spend a little bit of time maybe thinking about those tracks? Like, where is this life going? Where, where's the destination? What am I heading toward? And sometimes it can be hard to provide your own tracks, like to really be clear about that. And it might help you to like sign up for, for some kind of, uh, of pre-scheduled, pre-programmed, um, systematic way of doing something that, that is a goal for you. And I wouldn't recommend this for everybody, but I think with nines, this might be, this might be a way for you to kind of leverage 
your weaknesses and your strengths for your own advantage. What I'm, well, let me give you an example of what I mean by tracks. Well, I, I've talked to nines that, you know, have had good jobs and they had reliable jobs and they were very effective and they might have even made like salesperson of the year. They accomplished a lot. And then they decided, you know, they kind of like woke up and said, I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to go out and do this on my own. And, and they had a really hard time finding their motivation and staying motivated because there wasn't that prescribed track in front of them. Now, not that nines can't go off on their own and do whatever they want to do and do whatever. I mean, absolutely, we'd love to see it. Please do that. But I've just, it just seems to me that sometimes nines struggle with this. Like, like they're far more successful when, when the path is, is laid out in front of them, when they know exactly what's expected of them, exactly what the requirements are, exactly what the end goal is, what the task is. They got a good management team around them, good team supporting them. And it's like this nine will just go and go and go. They'll never stop. They'll persevere. They'll just keep going. But sometimes on your own, you might struggle with with uh, knowing what that course is or knowing what that next step is and keeping yourself motivated for the next level if it's not laid out clear for, for you. Think of like if you decided you wanted to learn something, like you wanted to learn all about World War II, you want to learn all about English history or African history or anything, just pick a topic, Spanish, whatever it is. Um, uh, some of the nines I've talked to find it very challenging to stay motivated on their own, you know, in this and this self-motivated way, which a lot of other people could really succeed at this. Fives, for example, they probably prefer that way of moving forward in, in, their, in their growth or in their learning. And you might find yourself much more successful as a nine if you signed up for a class, you know, where everything is laid out for you, it's all planned, and, and you turn your papers in on these days, and you kind of move through this agenda lockstep, and everything's, you know, laid out, and all the requirements, all the due dates, and I, you know, it seems like nines, they say, oh yeah, I love that. You know, I was able to accomplish so much in that kind of environment, but out there on my own, I just kind of floundered and, and didn't know what to do next. And, you know, I ended up just playing my guitar and watching Netflix and, and had a hard time staying motivated. Now, if you're not like that, man, fantastic. That's great. That just shows that, you know, you've, you're, you're working on yourself and you're pushing yourself and you're growing. And that's, that's my goal for you is that you become aware of these things, these, these difficulties and, and push back on them and hopefully overcome them and not let them at least rule your life or limit what you're capable of or limit what's possible for you. Okay, so picking up other people's agendas. And I think here it's a good thing to mention another metaphor that I use all the time is that as a nine, you sometimes might think of yourself as like a wagon and other people are tractors. If I could just hitch my wagon to a really good tractor, then I'll be okay in life. And I just want to remind you that, that that's great. You, you can really you know, find a certain level of productivity in your own life by helping other people achieve everything they could be. But just a reminder that you are also a tractor. You're not just a wagon and you have every right to show up and own your own life and own your own space and set your own course in life. Just a reminder. I know that you already know this, but you just might need to be reminded of it that, hey man, you're a person. You're a person that has a will and that will has every right to exist in this space. You have every right to assert yourself within your own space. And asserting yourself in your own space is not being aggressive to your neighbor. You have every right to own your yard, to own your life, to own your voice, and to make your voice known in this world. Yeah, I realize that if you do that, sometimes it's going to create conflict. Sometimes it's going to disappoint other people. Sometimes other people might not understand and might get discouraged or frustrated with you. But still, that doesn't change the fact that you have every right to be a full card-carrying member of the human race. And man, we'd love to see you do that. And we should applaud it. When you, when you know your own mind and speak your own mind, the people around you need to support you and applaud you. Not over-talk you, not minimize you or diminish you, but they ought to celebrate it. Even if they disagree with you, they'd be like, well, fantastic. I'm so glad that you know what you believe about this and you're willing to stand up for it and you're willing to say it out loud. And we totally are support your right to do that. They could disagree with the nature of your beliefs or disagree with your conclusions, but, 
but everybody ought to come around you and support you for for digging in, knowing what you want, saying it out loud, saying what you don't want out loud, that's what needs to be celebrated. And that's really turning around and facing that sloth dragon that's trying to overcome and t overtake you. It's just turning around and saying, you know what? I'm going to spend some time listening to my own voice. I'm going to spend some time trying to figure out what do I care about? What do I believe? What do I, what is important to me? And when you hear that, then by all means, like take the courage to say it out loud. And that's fully showing up to life. All right. Okay. So what else do we want to say? Um, you find it hard to assert yourself, tend to minimize yourself. Uh, okay. Well, I think that's good for this video. We're going to continue on in the next video. And as always, guys, thanks for sticking with me through this. I hope it's encouraging to you. I hope it's helpful to you. And uh, as always, my goal is that you fully show up and be present to life. Thank you, guys. I'll see you next time.